So now we can look at another <clears throat> aspect of um, aqueous equilibria, solubility products. So we're looking at slightly soluble salts. And that's when you take a solid and you, and you put it in water, it dissociates a little bit into ions. And you'll see that the equilibrium constants that we're gonna look at are, are relatively small. So if we had something like barium sulfate, let's look at barium sulfate. So we have barium sulfate, so solid. It's gonna dissociate into barium ions and sulfate ions. So you're gonna to need to know the charges of these ions um, that will help you. If you remember your polyatomic ions, great, that's the sulfate. Barium's in group two, so it has a plus two charge. Uh, if you were to write the K reaction here, this is called the KSP. The SP stands for solubility product, and that's when you're taking a solid and turning it into ions. So the KSP is just equal to, again, products over reactants. In this case, our reactants are, um, we have a solid, so it's not, not going to be in there. If you had coefficients over here, um, then you would have to square them or, or you know, raise to the, the whatever power you had there. And when you look this up in the back of the book or in a table online, the KSP for this is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10. That's pretty small. This comes from a table, in case you're wondering where that came from. It's in lots of different tables. And this is for um, 25 degrees Celsius. We're only going to deal with 25 degrees Celsius. All the tables in the, in the back of the book are for that temperature. These will change at different temperatures. All right, so the KSP is called the solubility product. Um, don't put solids in your KSP expression. Um, these are, this, this equilibrium expression is related, these are concentrations, right? So if you know these concentrations, you can figure out the KSP. If you know the KSP, you can figure out the equilibrium concentrations, which is really telling you about how soluble this solid is. Um, if it's very soluble, then you're gonna have high concentrations. Not very soluble, then you're gonna have lower concentrations. So let's see, can we just get some practice writing out the uh, solubility product constants? And then you can look up the table, uh, look up the values in Appendix D if you want to. Um, barium carbonate, so this, this may, you may be thinking, oh gosh, we have to name again. Remember that from chapter two. Barium carbonate, barium and carbonate. Carbonate has a minus two charge, barium has a plus two charge. Um, so that's the solid that I have, and I'm going to dissociate that into barium ions which will be aqueous and carbonate ions, which are also aqueous. And the KSP just looks like barium times carbonate, done. And you look that up in the table and that KSP is like 5.0 times 10 to the negative nine, very small. Silver sulfate, silver has a plus one charge and the sulfate has a minus two charge, so when you put that together, you get Ag2SO4. That too is important because when you dissociate this in ions, you get two silver ions and a sulfate. I'm dropping my aqueous here, but they're aqueous. And then your KSP will be silver squared times the sulfate. So you need to know those charges in order to make uh, the right compounds. And when you look that up in the back of the book, the KSP is um, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. Alright, so that's not too terribly small. Iron 3 phosphate, iron, I'm oh, sorry, iron 2 phosphate. Iron 2 has a plus 2 charge. Phosphate is minus 3, so you end up with Fe3 PO4 2. And that's the solid, and that's going to dissociate into three iron ions and two phosphate ions. And so your KSP looks like iron raised to the third power MPO4 squared, and that number is like 1.0 times 10 to the negative 36. So you have to be able to write these equations, write these reactions down. Um, sometimes you'll be given the name and you have to write the formula, sometimes they give you the formula straight up and you just have to dissociate into ions. But you have to be able to recognize these polyatomic ions, so carbonate, and you should know the charge, sulfate, phosphate, all the ones that we had to memorize in Chem 1.
Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look, look at these reactions and try to calculate the solubility. So solubility is not the same thing as KSB. KSB, that's the equilibrium constant. That's not going to change um, unless you change the temperature, but that, that's not going to change. The solubility is like the molar solubility. Um, how many moles are being dissolved per liter? That sort of thing. So that's a concentration. That's really what we're going to be uh, calculating that. We're going to relate the solubility to the KSP. Solubility has units. It's going to be like molar. <laughs> KSP has no units. The equilibrium constants don't have any units. Uh, solubility can change depending on lots of different things. So we're going to look at pH and we'll look at the common ion problems. That will affect how much of your solid will actually dissolve in, in water. Um, the KSP is not going to change. It's a constant. The equilibrium constant. As long as you don't change the temperature, the K won't change. So let's look at one of these problems here. We're going to do it like the long way, and then we'll show you some shortcuts on how to, how to do these a little bit quicker. So the first one may seem like, oh my god, this is going to take forever. And then once you see the shortcut, you'll be like, oh, this is not too bad. So at, at 20 degrees Celsius, um, saturated aqueous solution of silver carbonate contains 32 milligrams per liter. That's pretty much telling you you can dissolve 32 milligrams in one liter of this stuff. And they want you to find the KSP. So the way these problems work, they either give you the solubility or ways to find these concentrations so you calculate the KSP, or they give you the KSP and they're asking about these things. So we have our reaction here, um, and I usually won't give that to you, so you're going to have to be able to write that. You take the um, silver carbonate and and then uh, you dissociate that into ions. So this two comes out in front with your silver and your carbonate. And then don't forget to square um, oops, the silver over here, right? Those coefficients. So it's products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Now, let's look at the solubility. These are kind of funky units. 32 milligrams per one liter. It's going to help us if we can get that to moles per liter. All right, and this is for, that's how much silver carbonate we have. So let's convert those. We know that there are a thousand milligrams in uh, one gram. And then we can find the molar mass of this. Uh, it's 275.8 grams of the silver carbonate per one mole. And then we have moles over liters. So this is 1.16 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. That's that's our solubility. That's how many moles of the silver carbonate we can dissolve per liter. So how does that relate to everything else? We need to find, in order to find KSP, we need to know the silver ion concentration and the carbonate concentration. So what I have there is the solubility. It's it's relating the solubility of the solid. So if we look at, if we're trying to find the silver concentration, we're going to start off with 1.16 um, times 10 to the negative 4 moles of the silver carbonate. We're just going to use stoichiometry here right, for one liter and say for every one mole of the silver carbonate I have two moles of silver ions so I can figure out um, when this thing dissociates in ions, when this dissolves, right, this is the solubility, how many moles of, um, what's the molar concentration of each of my ions? So this is just, I have twice as many, right? So I have 2.32 times 10 to the negative 4. That's my silver ion concentration. And then for the carbonate, I had 1.16 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter of the silver carbonate and for every one mole of this I get one mole of that one mole of the silver carbonate one mole of carbonate so it's just the same so that was like a really long process just to get back to where we were and that's our carbonate concentration so now all I have to do is take this number and this number and plug it into my equation to solve for my KSP. And I get KSP is the silver concentration, which is the 2.32 times 10 to the negative 4 squared times the 1.16 times 10 to the negative 4. And my KSP works out to be 6.2 times 10 to the negative 12, which is pretty darn small. 
All right, so this is the long way of doing it. I'm going to show you the shortcut in the next video. Um, just to summarize, all we had to do was find the molar solubility. So we took these milligrams per liters, and sometimes they just give you molar to start off with, which makes it easier. This is a little bit trickier. So we had to go milligrams to grams, grams to moles using molar mass. We get that concentration, and then you do some more stoichiometry, and you compare how many moles of this um, that dissolve from how many moles of this will I get, how many moles of silver, how many moles of the carbonate. Once you have those moles and it's all in one liter, those are your molar concentrations. Plug those back into your KSP, and you're done.